Well, hello, my lovely nestlings, and welcome to today's video where I'm going to get ready and uh, use some favorites. And I'm also going to chat about autism. So today is Makeup and Autism Monday. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Nikki. I'm 46 from the Netherlands, hence the accent. I actually always say I'm not old and vintage because vintage is very hot and in season. Never mind. I am also Dutch. I'm slightly orcish and I recently found out that I am on the autistic spectrum. Let me explain the slightly orcish. And if you're scratching your head, it means olive. When I found out that I was a warm olive, my son actually said, oh, then you're slightly orcish. And it basically stuck. Like flypaper. So yeah, I hope today's video will just help you. My passion is makeup, especially eyeshadows. And I'm just going to use some of the favorite things that I have in my collection. And just let you know what I do and don't like about makeup. And the feeling of makeup on my face. Being also um, autistic, it it's interesting sometimes right so if you are one who struggles with this as well then this is definitely the not only the video for you but also the channel for you i will link down below the makeup that i use and without further ado just you know enjoy because here comes me kind of trying to explain um what i like and not like in makeup and putting it on the face i did my skincare uh, and my sunscreen and i know that especially for me Finding a sunscreen that I like, uh, that was kind of a thing. I tried it all. I, I, I live in the Netherlands, as I said, so European sunscreens are different from the American ones. But I come from the age where everything was, there was no, it was sunblock. That when you put it on your face, you felt like you couldn't breathe. That's how thick and heavy it was. Sunscreens get better and better all the time. But the one that I love a lot for my face, especially underneath makeup, is from Embrace Solaire. Ambre Solaire, um, and it's the anti-pigment spots, super UV with hyaluronic acid, whatever, the SPF 50. So this is what it looks like. Yeah, when, when they have a sale like they are having now, I basically stock up because ever since I found this sunscreen, it's very, very nice. The one that I use for my body, I have that one as here, here as well, is this one, the Australian Gold. This is the one that I very much prefer for my body. I hope that helps. If so, uh, this one is lightweight. It gives me right now when we're in the height of summer and it's warm and I'm sweating and oily sweating um it's still light enough for me to be able to tolerate it uh if i have a if i have if it's very very warm here if i stay indoors i'm then not doing sunscreen because i'm indoors anyway um but this one for me works in winter when my face is a little bit drier when it's a little bit colder it gives me a little bit of i don't uh, i don't want to say hydration but a little bit of greasiness but in a good way but then i do use primer so in summer usually i don't really use primers i can i think with the foundation that i grabbed i can use a primer so let's grab a primer that i really enjoy as well so let's go then to this one from makeup revolution the kombucha skin shot it's it's a gel primer but in this it's kind of the whole experience for me so let me explain what i mean this has a a sweeter kind of peachy yes the peach candies that's kind of what it smells like i really enjoy the smell but if you do not then you at least know that this has a smell something similar like this uh, is the one from essence um this one the fix and last although this one has more grip this one has a little bit more spreadability i want to call it or an alternative um If you don't, if you can't with the smell, is this one the Hydro Primer from Catrice? It doesn't. What did I do? It doesn't have a smell. So this one is also uh, very, very nice. But I really enjoy this smell, so I just want to use it. And what I look for in a primer, I want. Yeah, I basically want it all. I want spreadability. So this is a very lightweight gel primer, which is very, very nice um, in summer. I have also tried the one from Milk Makeup. It's more sticky than this one. So this, while it feels hydrating and kind of cooling and just nice on my skin at least, it gives me a little bit of tack, but it doesn't feel like when I'm doing this, my fingers are glued to my face. Because yeah, 
it, texture. It's definitely, definitely a thing, right? So I know that a lot of you struggle with texture on your skin. So in today's video, I kind of hope to maybe, I don't know, give you some or or alternatives. So what do I look for in a foundation or in face products in general? I want it to be lightweight in summer. Uh, well, I want it to be lightweight anyway, but I have different preferences in the season. So right now, in summer, it's hot. I want something that, that I don't necessarily need powder. I needed to think a little bit. We're going to use the Woma foundation. This is in the shade Honey Honey T1N, uh, which is, I think, their lightest olive. Usually, it's way, way, way too dark for me. And it's actually my darkening up foundation throughout the year. But right now, I'm dark enough that I can use it on its own. Maybe I need to lighten it up a hint, but I'll do that with the concealer. So this foundation, and I will show you on my sheet... This uh, foundation is very, can you see that it's very liquidy, very runny? It's a very, very nice foundation. And that is kind of what I like. I like a foundation that is thinner. If it's a thicker formula, like for instance, the Charlotte Tilbury one, I don't mind it, but I want it not feeling heavy and not in the height of summer. The combination I am very much enjoying right now is the combination between a brush and a sponge. And actually, this is a dry sponge because I failed to wet my sponge and I don't feel like getting up. So I just grab a little bit of foundation and I don't use foundation directly on my face either because I feel like I cannot control it. So I either put it on the back of my hand or here on a sheet where I can just, you know, work the brush in a little bit and then just put it on the face. I will zoom you in a little. I forgot to do my brow gel. I told you I have a routine, right? So my brow gel is um, from Catrice. It is their super glue brow thingy gel. I need my brows plastered to my head. Otherwise they do this and I don't like that. But I don't want a heavy feeling. So I just basically put it in my brow. Brush it through. And it doesn't feel, you, you don't feel it. Or at least I don't feel it. And sometimes with different brow gels, you do feel feel it. And this one, I don't know. I just do not feel it. The only thing though, I need to clean it off now. The excess. Before it dries. So now I'm just going to let that set. And I'm just going to stipple on the foundation. Now for foundation brushes. I have tried numerous brushes. Honestly, this one, this one I can work with. This one is soft enough. It's one from Morphe. Um, I can just do, do that. If I tap and I feel like it's pokey, I, um, and it can be one hair. If you don't like to use a brush, you can use your fingers. However, I don't really like to use my fingers for foundation. That is why I'm doing different things. So I have this brush that I really enjoy. Um, but I can also just use a sponge. It does though depend on some foundations. Because if the foundation is still too sticky. And I put bounce the sponge on. I feel the sponge um, sticking to my face. And kind of pulling your face with it. So this is a foundation that um, I enjoy a lot. Because it is thin. Um... And I don't feel it drying down when it's drying down. But I do have to get rid of the hairs because they're driving me insane. So I have a magnifying mirror. I'm going hair hunting. Eventually. And what I do then is I just kind of grab a little bit that I have left on my sheet. And I just go over some of the patches. And honestly, if you don't, if you don't like foundation on your face... Then don't wear foundation. It is all okay, right? Or maybe you like a skin tint. Or maybe you like a BB cream. Or maybe you find that you very much enjoy uh, mixing foundation with some um, moisturizer. You know? You can do that too. So that you just have a, have a tiny layer. Or maybe for you it works if you try a powder foundation. If you're not sure, go to a makeup store. If you can though, or if someone else can go for you, get samples or, you know, see if you can, uh, if, if there's someone uh, in your surroundings that has the product that you would like to try and just ask if you can try a little bit. It doesn't even have to be a color match, just the feeling. Then you know that you can with the feeling, you know. So I have tried a lot of foundations. Uh, a drugstore option that I really, really enjoy is the one from Catrice, the HD foundation. They unfortunately don't have that in an olive. What I'm feeling right now, when I'm sitting like this, I feel that I have foundation on my face. When I really, really think about it, I can feel it a little bit. 
but I feel it actually more here. I never really thought about how foundation feels on my face. So let's see if I can... How does that feel? This foundation feels like... It kind of feels like it's setting down right now. But it's not itching. It's also not pulling on my skin. And I can feel it because I'm talking. So my face is moving, right? I can kind of feel it here a little. And how do, does it feel? It feels... It kind of feels like it's gripping itself together. It's not an unpleasant feeling for me at least. And I really have to concentrate the feel. I'm very feely though. So there is that. Huh, interesting. I never thought I never thought about it. When I feel it with my fingers, so there's number one, right? How does it feel on your face? For me, this feels nice. I did not really build it up a lot. I like thin layers. I also like when I put foundation on a certain amount of spreadability that I don't... Some, sometimes when my face is dry and I use, for instance, my Lisa Eldridge foundation and I don't use a, a priming oil underneath, it feels when I put on the foundation, it almost feels like... When you're painting something and your brush is actually... The paint is a little bit too thick and too sticky already and you feel that dragging. That. That's then what I feel. Me no likey likey. But yeah, when I feel... I don't feel like my face very much very sticking to my face. And it's pretty warm here. So, um, yeah, I don't like a sticky face. I don't like it when I touch my face and it remains sticky. And I have that especially here. Um, so, yeah, forehead's okay. I'm going to use concealer. The concealer that I have is from Kosas. This is the shade 5.50. And again, this is a lightweight concealer. Um, I, I'm not as particular with concealers as I am with foundations because it's a small area. As for concealer brushes, yeah, it kind of needs to be soft, right? So I tried, a, I have tried a lot of brushes. I need a brush that's soft. I need a brush that stays soft, that is soft. And that does not poke me in the eye, which no one likes. But I think that if you are, especially if your sensory, uh, sen your sense of touch is heightened... You're extra sensitive to that, right? Uh, I'm just going to put in... What am I going to put in my brows? A brow pencil. It's just any old brow pencil is okay. Yeah, let's use this one. This is okay. This one from Catrice. I like a thin micro pencil. I also really enjoy cream products for uh, blush and highlight and such. So I just grabbed some. I grabbed this one from Makeup Revolution, which has a little bit more... Uh, it's a little bit more of a creamier formula. Let's see if we can kind of do something with it. And I want a brush that's a little bit smaller. Now what I do is I tap in and then I do this. So I can again control it and kind of also feel the brush a little bit. And then I just kind of work it on. And here the trick is again. I don't really like a formula that's very, very stiff. I like a formula that's a little bit creamier. That I feel like I don't have to really work it, you know, for my brush. But the brush I'm using right now is from BH Cosmetics. It's from their Rose Gold set. And I think it's the number two. I think it's the contour brush, I think they call it. This can feel a little bit heavier if you go in too heavy-handed. So light layers is the trick, for me at least. Okay, let's go to cream blushes. So cream blushes, again, it's just... Lightness, lightness. Now, if you don't like cream blushes, then do powder blushes. If you don't like powder blushes, then go to cream blushes. It's not that deep, basically. It's not that difficult. So I basically grabbed one of my favorites, which is from Freck. It's called Cheek Slime. And honestly, the name is why I chose it. Because I was like, what's that? So yeah, I just, again, have it on my hand. I just go with my brush in. I don't want my brush too wet. And I'm just going to kind of stipple it on lightly. I will do a separate brush video on the brushes that I like. And I, I don't want my face to feel like it is encased in something. Which I don't think that anyone, no, no one likes that. But I just think that, that we can just be more susceptible to that feeling because we are so... 
easily overwhelmed with stuff. Um, I do kind of want a little bit of a lip oil thingy. Um, I have different ones. Oh, let's grab the new one from Catrice because I really like the lip oils from Catrice as well. So let's do that a little. It's It feels hydrating. It doesn't feel sticky and it doesn't feel heavy and gloopy like some lip glosses can. I hope that helps. Okay, um, what's next? Yes, highlighters. I love the Colourpop Super Shock highlighters. They're a very nice texture. And I this is one of the few things that I use my, with my finger. And this just, there's just that smoothness is very, very, very enjoyable. And then I just tap that on. And if you are like, oh, that sounds nice. Uh, see if you can swatch them if you like that but it just feels very feels very smooth i love it this is also a very nice color for me this is in the shade wisp and um, again you don't need foundation on your face to enjoy makeup because you can also just do a little bit of extra blush do i want a powder i'm kind of feeling do i want a powder i kind of I kind of do. Yeah, I kind of do. So let's let's pick out the powder. So let's go to a favorite. It's Charlotte Tilbury. I really enjoy her powder. I also... It's actually the, the pressed powder that's my favorite. Let's just be for real. So for powder products, I have these style of brushes. Oh, usually I grab a smaller one for underneath my eye, but that's okay. This is one from Sonia Kashuk, and it's just the softest brush ever. It's a small point brush. And I have more. So this is also one. But I don't know. There's just something about that. This is a little bit denser. This one. What I also don't like is when I feel the brush dragging. So when I do this. It's okay. A it drags a little bit on my cheeks. Yes. It's very important for me that the brush does not drag. Okay. Let's... Um, do we want some powder products? Sure, let's try these. Now, I, I had house labs here and I really do enjoy them. So again, another flame top. This is the bronzer. And I very much use the tip of the brush to blend. In circles. Okay. I also have a blush highlighter thingy from them i'm just going to use the same brush i'm just cleaning it off on the towel because i also have more of these but this is the one that i use so the other one that i have which you would say but it's exactly the same yeah but it's not because this is a little bit more dense it's a little bit stiffer this one is just the perfect amount of flimsiness and soft it's, this is a real hairbrush though uh, and when i wash these if i wash them It's another thing. Uh, when I wash these, I always use conditioner later. I put them in the conditioner as well. Like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, now I am going to go to my biggest passion. And that's eyeshadow. Yeah. And the palette that I pulled uh, out of my collection. I have a big collection. I have, I think... I haven't counted them. But it's, it's I think, over 250 eyeshadow palettes. So... While I love makeup, the eyeshadows, that's that's where, yes. Um, the palette that I pulled out, it is a favorite. But it's just, in this, it's the whole sensory experience. So I grabbed the Queen Bee palette from uh, Colored Rain. So can we just, just first the outside of the palette. See, do you see the wings moving? That part, I hope. Can you hear that? I, I love to do that with my nail. Yes, that was annoying. I'm sorry. I love that. So this is, again, with the whole sensory experience, I love the way that this is looking. And then when I open her up, these are just such fun colors. There are bees embossed in it. So it's the comp it's a small... It's a small, warm-toned palette. But still, it's the entire experience. And it goes with my skirt. It's the in That you cannot see. It's the entire experience that I'm going for right now. I'm going to prime with the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. Because it doesn't have a base shade. And I am darker than my eyeshadow bases. This is a formula that is thin. 
again it's thin but it still has substance because that's what i want in an eyeshadow primer i also have one here that's basically a concealer consistency that feels too heavy however i do use that one when i'm doing eye swatches for instance so we're going to use this one today Patrice used to have a dupe for this, uh, which was their eyeshadow primer that was in a tube, also with a Dover, but they don't sell it here at least anymore. But I don't know. I used to use that one for ages. I don't know if they still make that, actually. And then I just grab a brush. This is actually the wrong brush. So let me grab the right brush. I should have known years ago. Uh, the brush that I use for eye primer it's from uh, alien cosmetics or unearthly Cosme cosmetics it's the a6 this is from her first brush line and this is honestly the only brush i like from that set and that's not her fault it's just i am extremely particular in my eyeshadow brushes and i never really made the connection until uh, one of my besties said i don't want to seem She says, I don't want to be mean, but honestly, I think that the reason that you're so particular about your brushes is also because you are artistic. And I was thinking about it and I said, I think you're, I think you're right. Uh, because for me, my eyes being so sensitive to pokiness and such, and just, I honestly, I'm very particular in my brushes. So let me grab my brushes. So here are all my eye brushes. I use... A small amount of them so i could either i could even declutter this more but here are brushes in there that i that i like and love it's basically a, a mix so brushes that i use very very often are for instance these two from um, nabla but they are not sold individually so yes then we are going to go to my my favorites right now Um, among others and that's the that's the brushes from unearthly cosmetics they are just so so nice so soft nabla's brushes are very very soft um i like nabla more than sigma i do have some sigma brushes that i like what was my plan i think we're going to go very basic yeah i think we're going to go very basic so i don't set my eyeshadow base well i do but i set it actually with the color that i want to use so i think i think we're just going to start with the yellow because i can so i'm going to start with the yeah am i yes i am and this is also a formula that's a little bit soft it feels soft at least and i'm just going to tap it on first And again, this brush, it's not a pokey brush. Because if I have a pokey brush, I do not like that. And yeah, I also don't like it when I have a lot of drag on my eyes. But I don't really want to set my eyeshadow base be with uh, face powder because I uh, want that pigment. So I set my base with the color that I'm either the color that I'm going to use or a lighter color. Or contrasting color sometimes. Can you see? Can you see what's happening there? Can you see that? Now I'm pushing. But that's the feeling that I have. When my brush drags. That's what I mean by my brush drags. And you you usually don't see it. But I can feel that. And I don't like that at all. I don't. Okay. I'm cleaning my brush on a towel. Another thing. Clean brushes. Now. I like my brushes to be clean because I like the idea of clean brushes. But to use, I don't like using very, very clean brushes. Because very, very clean brushes, they just, again, they, they feel almost, I almost want to say stiffer. Um, they, they feel like they drag on my eyes because they are, I don't know, not saturated with powder yet or something like that maybe i need to maybe i need to swirl my clean brush first to uh, into some face powder maybe that helps i don't know i don't know i just don't like extremely clean brushes so what i actually have been doing for eons is i have microfiber towels here the ones that kind of stick to your fingers you know when you feel them um and i use setting spray for instance or or just water and that's that's basically the first clean so in between I wipe off my brush on that because the the fiber of the microfiber gra grabs a hold of the eyeshadow, right? And uh, I don't use cream eyeshadow anyway. So the, if I use creams, I do wash my brush or my version of washing my brushes. 
So anyone else have that? I also do not like to wash my brushes. Now is IsoClean. So what I do is um, not always because of the alcohol content in there. And I just don't think that it's very, very good for your brushes, especially for real hair brushes. Uh, I, I basically use that to deep clean a little bit more. My uh, face sponges I actually throw in the washing machine. Works. IsoClean also very much cleans them though. And then they go in the washing machine once a week. Okay. I am going to go to this brush, which is one of my all-time favorite brushes. Yes, this is also from Unearthly Cosmetics. And it is in the... In the uh, it's the one UC83, I believe. It's not a sponsored video, honestly. It's just that her set... And I have raved about her set ever since I got it in PR. Her set is just amazingly soft. I am still... Um, and I'm going to... From my bottom lid, I'm going to go up. So I'm going to start on my bottom lid. And I'm just going to angle and then up. And again, tapping. And because I tap so often with my brushes... I need brushes that don't poke me in the eyeball, right? So... I've tried so many brushes. Uh, Morphe brushes. I remember st I remember uh, buying Morphe brushes. And I had one that was the 514, which was, it felt a little bit scratchy. And I did not really mind that it felt scratchy. It was when it was pokey. That's when I tossed it. Because I was like, this feels so... No, I cannot give this to anyone because it does not feel soft enough. Let's also go to the shade Behave, because I can. I'm going to darken it up a little bit, so I'm just going to use the same brush. A little bit more in. So yeah, how are you met with... Matt, let's touch. Uh, with uh, makeup. Are there any things that you enjoy? Uh, are there things that you don't enjoy? Um, what are your issues You know, for instance, with foundation, what is your what is your issue? What what do you not like? What do you do like? Are there any foundations that you that you love that you want us to know about? Is there anything that you need help with? Let me know because I I really want to help. So, um, I think I'm going to go to uh, primer now and for I for shimmer primer because my eyes are older, I kind of need a gel primer to help the. Um, shimmers stick a little bit more Especially there I have here in a jar I have my favorite gel primer Which is from Death and Candy Custom Creations And I will link it down below um, As you can see it's a gel I have a very very big pot And I just put some in a smaller jar I have a flat brush here And I'm just going to It's clean And I'm just going to grab a little bit of that gel primer Put it on the back of my hand like that Can you, can you see that? What I did? I hope so And kind of Work it in the brush a little bit. I want the brush coated, but I don't want it very wet. Um, and then I'm going to tap it on my eye. And then I'm going to go to this shade, which is called Unbelievable. Now, shimmer-wise, it's. I, I think it's also one of the reasons that I just don't don't like glitter because of the feeling of the particles. So for, I think I need a different brush though. So this looks glittery, but it doesn't have glitter. Because honestly, I just don't like glitter. I don't like the way that it feels. I um, I can feel it on my lid and I don't like that. So there are some glitters that I enjoy. Well, enjoy is a large word, but that I can work with. Those are glitters that are very, very fine. That when I do, and flat, that when I do that with my finger, I don't feel them. It's, it's, I have a few of those. It's rare. Okay, I want to build it up a little bit more, but I want my sponge tip applicator. Because it behaves like a finger would. If what I have said and kind of described on what I like and what I don't like, maybe that is helpful. And if you're like, ooh, uh, that sounds like things that I have as well, you know, check out my channel for the videos that I have done, for the reviews that I have done. I think I want a little bit, a hint more definition. So I am going to go to the black that is in this palette. Okay, for inner corner highlight, 
I am going to go to this shade, which is called Mind Your Business. Business. A very, very pretty shade this. Okay, I think this is it for the eye makeup. I am going to finish it off with um, liner, mascara and... I think I'm going to do lashes as well because I do really enjoy wearing lashes um, unless they poke me in the eyeball. So uh, yeah, again there, I have preference, a very, very much high preference. I don't like bands that are clear because they warp too much uh, and I just have difficulty putting them on. And I also don't like a heavy, heavy lash that has a heavy feeling. So my heaviest lash is from AOA Studios. It's style jean and the rest I think are... I don't know, thinner, lighter. I'm just going to uh, find find something that I want to wear. And then I'll be uh, right back, show you the finished look. And uh, yeah, maybe chat a little bit more depending on how long the video is. I like it. I like how it turned out. I did uh, put on falsies. I put on the baby dolls that I get at Primark. Uh, so basically, the, this is what the box looks like. And uh, this is not the these are not the falsies that are supposed to be in there though. They are exclusively sold at Primark. And if you're like, I cannot get them. Uh, the ones from Unearthly Cosmetics in the style Dreamlike are extremely similar on the eye. They look a little bit different in the box, but they are extremely similar on the eye. And honestly, I think that the ones from Unearthly are a little bit more comfortable to wear for me. Uh, because these, the ones that I have on right now, baby dolls, have... The band is a hint thicker than the ones from Unearthly. And yeah, that's it. They're a hint thicker. I prefer a band that's... I don't, I don't want a fabric band. Sometimes you have falsies that have a fabric band. And they those get yucky so, so quickly when you do the glue on. So in hindsight, it, it, it should have been obvious. I thought that I was just always extremely particular with my makeup. And my brushes and the tools that I wear. Um, and I am... But now I'm like, oh yeah, kind of the signs were a little bit there. So what I don't like in makeup is a heavy scent. I don't like a heavy scent. I don't like anything that's overly sticky. I don't want a heavy feeling on my face. Um, so the products that I pulled today are reflective of that. And I kind of hope that I helped you a little bit. I just also wanted to put on makeup on my face and chat a little bit, show off some of my favorites that I love to use. And I know that there are more like me out there who are on the spectrum but love makeup as well or maybe they just like dang it i just cannot wear foundation anymore because i hate this and this feeling maybe this helps oh oh i forgot the lippy that i put on my face so the falsies that i have on i mentioned yeah uh, the eye pencil that i pulled is from glam shop and it is the shade Newbie. I don't know if it's still available, but the formula is very, very nice. It's very nice and soft. It glides on and it sets down and it stays all day without giving me that very, very dry feeling that happens sometimes with especially with some cheaper brands this is kind of drugstore pricing uh but these i really really like i think they're very very nice and yeah again they stay on for a very very long time uh on my lips is um cursed cosmetics um i have pulled the lip liner in the shade holy this is the biggest lip liner that i ever have and i have all her shades these are not extremely creamy, but they're not very stiff either. They deposit the right amount of pigment. I don't have to go like that. So I don't feel that I bleed or bruise my, my lips because I need to get pigment out. I really like them and they stay on for a very, very long time. And you get a crap ton. Um, that's a new metric, by the way. A crap ton. It's good for everything. It's one of my favorite words, I think. And I also pulled one of her lipstick, liquid lipsticks. This is in the shade Ride. Her formula is very thin. Uh, it's very thin. It's not drying. It sets down on its own. I do have to say that there is a point in time where it feels a little bit sticky from the inside out. If that makes any sense, that's when it's drying down. But this does dry down quickly and it's not a heavy layer it's one of my favorites at least liquid lipsticks go so it's it's liquidy it's thin um a comparison between uh, from this one is the ones from uh colored rain 
feel the same. The ones from Black Moon Cosmetics are also a very, very thin formula. Ace Beauté is very thin. Yeah, I also love the ones from One Earthly, but those are a little bit heavier. So, um, yeah, it's very pigmented. One swipe, basically, that's, that's this. You can use this with a gloss as well. And that is something that I do. If I find that a liquid lipstick that I have on is a little bit drying, maybe, I just get a little bit of a gloss, a thinner gloss, and then just tap it over. And that works as well, for me at least. But yeah, this, this is some of the things that I love to wear. Also, I... Um, Glue my falses underneath my lashes instead of on top. And I have found that ever since I have done, I've done that, I feel them less. I do have to make sure that they are short enough though. So, and a little, a little bit more in than I would do them when they are... Um... Yeah, so basically my lash starts here. Otherwise, it irritates my eye. But I don't feel them right now. It also kind of depends on the glue. The glue that I prefer is the one from Duo. And I have the one, uh, this is the black one that I used right now in um, with a brush. So, yeah. that's the, These are some of my things that I found work best for me. That, may, that, that still allow me to... You know, um, do my passion and my, my, I don't know, the special interest, that my passion, let's just call it that. Um, my thing, that's what I always called it before I knew better or I knew that there was a word for it. My thing, I can still do my thing. I can still do what I really, really love to do, what I'm passionate about. Uh, I just found my ways. So if that sounds like, you know, something that you can vibe with. Make sure that you have hit the subscribe button and follow me on my journey. And that is going to be it for today. I will link the makeup that I used today down in the description box. And yeah, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know down in the comment section. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'm going to wish you a fantastic day, a fabulous evening. May your foundation always match your neck. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.